Welcome back to the Channel Collectors. So today we're going to be unboxing the second edition for Blood Bowl. I think the miniatures are really awesome and let's see what's inside. Okay. So this is brand new in shrink wrap and it comes with foil. Wow. Really liking the, the American looking aesthetic aesthetics here. And we're just going to remove the shrink wrap. So, for me, I am not a huge fan about Blood Bowl Although, I am starting to be tempted by the miniatures that are available in the set Because there are some miniatures that have been refreshed and I think that they look pretty awesome As a miniature painter, I'm always very attracted to how the miniatures look As I feel that they are very independent from AOS and 40k universe although they draw from a lot of their aesthetics and this is what we'll get so let's have a look okay, let's just open the box and just look at what you'll be getting so off the bat it looks like there is going to be quite a lot of miniatures although not as much as I expected but let's go take a look so of course you have brand new orcs. So these are the brand new orc miniatures. We are going to be assembling the brand new orc miniatures in a little bit and we are going to have a look. So from glancing at the from glancing at the pictures just now there is a train troll and I am very interested to see how the train troll will look. So I am just going to let the camera focus. Yeah, and it looks a lot better than what you did before and you're gonna get brand new referees I really like this elf referee we look at his face right here really really detailed so this human theme comes with a lot of metal surfaces which can be good for Painters, if you want to practice a bit on NMM, it's a lot of potential. And the tokens here have a very good potential to practice NMM too. I would say that there are a lot of faces, and if you are not a fan of painting faces, this theme would be pretty challenging for you because, yeah, it's quite a lot of faces right here. Ogre. This ogre kind of looks familiar. More human spruce. Okay, so that's so much about the miniatures. Let's get acquainted with the rest of the contents, shall we? Okay, right off the bat, you'll be getting this really awesome poster here. So at the back of the poster, oh, this is very interesting. This allows you to have a look at all the themes and all the miniatures that are available. For me, I'm particularly attracted by the Necromantic Horror theme right here. I'm just gonna zoom in here for you guys. And I also like the the Goblin theme. Oh, sorry, the Snotling theme. So you can have a look at the Snotling theme. I think these miniatures are really awesome. And the, the Nurgle theme is pretty interesting too. So these are some of the themes that are available for Blood Bowl. And you can always check them out. Unfortunately, uh, Sprue has uh, punctured this poster and I would love this poster to be in better condition but that's the way things are. 
Okay, so now we have the rule book. It's nice to see that the rule book is in full color, hopefully. And it's a hardback book. So that's really, really awesome. The way GW stuff should be. I, I'm a sucker for hardback stuff because I mean, it feels a lot more premium. It feels a lot more premium and I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot more longevity where this is from. And yeah, of course, the rules are the rules are what's important in the book. However, because ha, just call me a sucker for hardback because it just feels a lot more premium. And yeah, I like judging books by their covers. Okay, so this comes with uh, looks like some quick start rules over here. So if you wanna have a look, quick start rules are here. two sets of quick start rules so that your friend and you can have them and these are the rule books so it's nice to see that everything is is in full color and I'm honestly very tempted and interested to try to learn how to play this game wait man has a nice ribbon So I would say that the rule book looks very, very high quality. I do hope that there is a, there, there are pages to showcase the models around because if you're watching this channel and you're new here, I am primarily a miniature painter. And for me, rules are, rules are pretty hard to stomach because yeah, I spend most of my time painting. These are things that I don't really have time to look through. I'm just more interested to see about the colors and the art direction that they are going for. So just really, really quickly scrolling through. I really like the art style here. The art style is really nice because uh, it's very unique. It stands out from the green dark style that we see on. 40k and AOS. So I would say that this game definitely is very standalone. Although a lot of the miniatures are reminiscent of many uh, existing characters. So yes, there are some pictures of miniatures and the pictures of the miniatures are really awesome painted I think kudos goes to the Avia Metal team who have done them really well. I think they, they have their own individual art style here because the art style here does look a lot more does look a lot more art and less Avia Metal. Very very similar to what we see on the in the scene where the Spanish and the Polish painters have done so. See, even non-metallic metal is prominently featured. And I like that they showcase many many different models to, to show the possibilities of what can be done. Oh So the no speakers are here and oh, I really love this miniature. This this miniature looks so awesome, this pump wagon here. I would really love to paint this miniature just for fun because it's really awesome. This strong branch is looking pretty interesting too. And if you can see the faces are really well painted. Quite different from what we see in some of the regular avian metal stuff. Not saying that I'm a really good painter, but some faces just look a little bit off. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's the end of the rulebook. I'd say I really, really like this rulebook. Really tempting me to give this a try, but yeah, this is rulebook. Also comes with bases, of course. Two sets of dices. Dice, I mean, Uro. Oh, there's even a decal sheet for numbers. I think numbers really add a lot more characteristics to the miniature, and yeah, I highly recommend you use this decal sheet. I won't be opening the, the cardboard bases, sorry, the cardboard view here, but this is just cardboard view two-sided cardboard view with this uh, bench here very interesting design sleeping goblin over here with some tactics very nice and very unfortunately ah, the instructions are still black and white which is very uncharacteristic with what GW is currently doing. Yeah, so overall, I really enjoyed this unboxing this this set of miniatures because, yeah, I think this gives me a very good insight to what Blood Bowl is, and I get to see why fans are very very passionate about this game. I whether I will pick this up, I. Personally, for the rules, I'm not so sure. I would want to learn how to play the game before I would comment on that. However, as for the miniatures, I'm really, really, really very tempted to get some individual miniatures, such as the, the Snotling theme, just for painting. It looks like the Snotling theme comes with uh, two wagons, and I think it's something that I can definitely get behind because of how uh, expressive the, the miniatures look. So this is definitely something that I would consider. I think this is the way that you can get painters to be introduced to your game and be interested because in this way with interesting miniatures such as the horror theme and the snotling theme, I think this would be a good way to yeah engage your painter community and Hopefully more painters get more time to paint. However, we also know that as a painter, we spend so much time to paint and very likely there's very little time to play. However, I think with a thematic army like this, making a Blood Bowl diorama is not entirely out of the realm of possibility in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, unboxing of this Blood Bowl 2nd edition. Uh, we will be assembling some of the figurines so that you can have a look join us for the the size comparison part and we'll catch you in just a little bit okay so these are the miniatures that have been already assembled i picked out a couple of miniatures that i liked so first and foremost we have the train throw over here so i have to correct myself the train throw was uh was a miniature that wasn't resin and yeah it's a 2017 miniature so i would say that overall blood bow miniatures are pretty challenging to assemble even this orc leader which i assembled because the instructions as i mentioned are black and white and i don't really direct you to where to put the parts parts like these i honestly have not much confidence to say that these things go here because as you can see the contact points are actually quite quite big there are no nubs to dictate where they should be so for me this uh Oak miniature my new these are 2020 miniatures uh yeah do take some iq so i obviously don't have a thousand iq so I'm not very confident to say that where these pieces are. So, say for example, this uh, 
this plate over here it's uh, extremely vague I have no idea where to place it because uh, yeah it oh, looks like it's part of the job 1000 IQ moment there for me and yeah so I'm not really sure where to place these two horns so these are the things that uh, I generally have some gripe with uh, additionally some of the older miniatures such as the train throw have um, have nubs at the connecting areas of course the connecting areas are easy to grind away but sometimes we do miss uh, these connecting areas and yeah it would be a bit challenging because you will find that the part doesn't fit and you have to go back and grind it before you can glue it together so other than that the smaller miniatures such as this bias elf dwarf uh, yeah it's really nicely sculpted you can have a look let me just close up so that you can have a look yep. so this elf miniature it's uh yeah has very well defined face and i would say that by and large most miniatures are actually nice but uh, the miniatures are sliced up in really 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 odd areas so like Usually in other miniatures, what you get from the GW range is that these miniatures are, are sliced up really nicely and this would usually be a 2-3 to three part miniature. However, in this uh, Blood Bowl set, this leader of uh, the Imperial team is pretty extreme. So there are many parts in the sprue. Okay. And of course, if you look at this bird over here, the connection point is very vague. Surprisingly, I have no idea where to place the, the bird. Although, I know where the, the... In the black and white picture, it should look something like that. But uh, I'm not sure where to place this. Do I somehow stick the metal into one of the nubs or something like that? Not honestly too sure. So, honestly... I would say that this is one of the definite shortfalls for for this set and secondly uh, the plastic of course it comes colored so you can play right out of the box I think that's a very big benefit however if you ask me I have some uh, I'm not sure whether the, the plastic composition has changed because of the color because uh, they do seem a bit softer when I tend to cut them they don't come out as crisp as the normal grey plastic that GW tends to offer in their Age of Sigma and 40k kits so which leaves uh, quite a bit of residue if you ask me so like say for example we, I'm gonna grind this down in a later stage so wait let's zoom in here I'm gonna grind this down in a later stage however a lot of the nubs tend to be a lot more stubborn in this miniature so I'm not sure if it's just my my god hand clippers that are not not sharp anymore but uh, they seem to work pretty well with the rest of the miniatures I'm working and tend to produce a lot of dust when I'm grinding them away with the power tool so these are my very honest feedback about the Blood Bowl set uh, about the gameplay wise yeah uh, just let me know whether I should assemble up a set uh, and learn how to play the game because uh, this is honestly very new to me but as a painter I would say that the miniatures are very well sculpted and very dynamically posed especially the newer ones such as this uh, Black Hawk team so if you are a painter looking to see whether you want to create some kind of diorama or display for the Blood Bowl set I would say that this, this uh, Blood Bowl set is uh, generally a pretty good buy as with a lot of starter sets from Games Workshop very well sculpted, very well detailed. It's just that the assembly can be quite a pain in the ass, if you ask me. Okay, so that's it for me for this uh, Blood Bowl starter set for the second edition review. If you have any uh, comments or if you would like me to assemble any of the teams, let me know. If you found this info useful, do give me a like and subscribe. And of course, if you can support the channel even further, head on to the Patreon and become a Patreon. So I hope to see you in the next painting video. See you guys.